Will React Server Components change how we build React applications? And what does this mean for Next.js? Let's find out. Last week, the React team announced an experimental preview of React Server Components. Now, these server components will allow us to build apps that span the server and the client. So we can combine the rich interactive experiences of client-side apps with the improved performance of traditional server rendered applications. So what does this mean? React Server Components will likely change how we build React Components by not only reducing the client bundle JavaScript that we send to users, but also improving the initial page load time or the boot time. They'll also simplify data fetching and improve access to things like databases and file systems. Now I'll address the elephant in the room, which is, haven't we already done something like this before? I've, you know, I've used PHP before, I've used Ruby on Rails before. Isn't that kind of the same thing as this? And React Server Components are inspired by a lot of this prior art, but they aim to provide a solution that is more flexible than existing solutions in the ecosystem and improves that overall experience for React users. So in this video, we're going to talk about four different things. We're gonna talk about hybrid applications. How is this different from server-side rendering? What is React Suspense and concurrent mode? And then how will this change how we host our React applications? And then to end it off, we'll also do a demo of React Server Components using Next.js and Vercel. So first, hybrid applications. Developers want to create fast applications, and our users also want fast applications, but we want to be pragmatic about performance without having to sacrifice that user experience. And you know, a lot of the time we see these kind of silver bullets of web architecture, but that's not really the reality. In reality, it's a lot more nuanced than that. As web applications have matured, we've learned that choosing a single strategy, whether that's client-side rendering or server-side rendering or even static site generation for your entire application just really isn't practical. In reality, you need more flexibility. If we look on one end of the spectrum and we have pure server-rendered applications, these applications tend to lose some of that rich interactivity that you get with client-rendered applications. And then inversely, on the other end of the spectrum, these entirely client-side applications, as they grow and they scale, you can run into issues with performance or slow boot times. So you have these two rendering strategies, but React Server Components allow you to choose which one makes the most sense for your use case without having to drop your framework or switch things entirely. So you get to use the client and the server for what they're both best for in the bounds of your same application. To help explain this further, let's think through a quick example. So imagine you have a large React application like an IMDB or similar for showing movies, and you wanna decrease that initial page load time or that boot up time of your application. And this movie page has information about you know, the movie, a description, who's in the cast, images, et cetera. And because of that, you have some heavy dependencies maybe for parsing Markdown for that summary, and maybe a, a date library for you to show the date that it was released. Now, when you're including these dependencies in your client-side bundle, that's a lot of extra JavaScript that you have to ship to your client just to do formatting and visualization of data. It'd be a lot better if we could keep that on the server. React Server Components will allow you to keep these dependencies on the server and prevent you from shipping that extra JavaScript to the client. The second thing I wanna talk about is server-side rendering. So server-side rendering allows you to speed up that initial boot time by displaying an HTML version of the client components. However, you still need to download, parse, and execute those components once that HTML has loaded. React Server Components are different, but complementary to server-side rendering. So rather than returning HTML, the Server Components return a description of the rendered UI. This allows React to intelligently merge that new data with your existing client components and also make multiple refetches and not lose that client state. And we'll show this off in the demo at the end of this video. So what about Next.js? Frameworks like Next.js will combine server-side rendering with server components so you get the best of both worlds. You'll get to have your fast boot times as well as reducing the amount of JavaScript needed on the client. Most importantly, React Server Components allow you to choose the server or the client on a per component basis. 
So right now with Next.js, you can only choose on a per page basis using something like Git server-side props. So this allows a lot more flexibility. The best part is that React Server components will be incrementally adoptable with newer versions of Next.js, and you'll get all these benefits like faster server-side rendering and reduced client-side bundles without having to set this up yourself. The third thing I wanna talk about is React Suspense and Concurrent Mode. React Server components use Suspense to allow you to more easily wait for your code to load and provide a loading state or skeleton while that data is being fetched. And most importantly, Suspense prevents the network waterfall. So if we take a look at this diagram I have here, you see we have multiple API requests and they're happening in a sequence. Now with Suspense, you see that we're able to parallelize some of these requests and not block the client from rendering and then really easily show a fallback state for a loading spinner or some kind of skeleton. And this will also help prevent some race conditions. Now server components are also compatible with concurrent mode, which will allow us to render components as their data streams in, rather than waiting for that entire response to finish. The short summary of concurrent mode is that it allows React to make multiple state updates at one time, which in practice leads to better performance. The fourth thing I wanna talk about is hosting your React applications once server components are in the mix. Client-side rendering only makes hosting React applications pretty easy. There's a lot of different solutions in the ecosystem that are fast, they're free, and you don't have to worry about having a server. Now with React server components, you're introducing Node.js into the mix. This will require having a server or a serverless hosting provider and while it does introduce more complexity for hosting, the trade-off is that you get improved performance. Plus with server components, you get to use the same language, framework, and components across the full stack. So finally, let's take a look at an example that uses React server components so you can visualize what an application might look like utilizing some of these benefits. We have a pretty simple note-taking app that was created by the React core team and then updated by the Vercel team to work with Next.js and to be deployed on the Vercel platform. So if I scroll on the left, I can see different notes. And when I click on them, it shows the different note details on the right. And an interesting thing here is this detail on the right is rendered on the server. So you remember I talked about Markdown and date parsing libraries taking up a lot of space in that client side JavaScript bundle. When we render these on the server, like in this demo, we're able to avoid that. Let's pull up the network tab and click on a different note. And you'll see that we make an API request and we include some information like which note was selected, whether we're editing it and what the search text is. Now the response that we get back is that intermediate state that I talked about that tells React how to merge that new data with the existing client state. So if I'm typing in the search box, I see that more API requests are made and these new requests include that search value. But what's interesting is that when I click on a new note, which is rendered as a server component, I don't lose the client side state of what's in the search. So this is a really great application of how you could use server components. This demo is completely open source, so you can clone it, deploy it, try it out, and get a feel for how React server components actually work. So that's pretty much it. React server components are still experimental, and they'll start with adoption in frameworks like Next.js while issues are figured out, and the larger ecosystem and library authors have a chance to update their packages for server components. Everything mentioned in the video today, as well as the link to the demo will be in the description below, as well as the official announcement and RFC if you wanna investigate more. Thank you so much for watching.